Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Welcome. Beginning a brand new week with you. 888-900-3393. Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, Coming up about an hour and a half. Uh, We're going to talk to Steve Baker. Very much in the news right now. Uh, And for good reason. He turned himself in on Friday to the FBI. And so... I guess they did release him, though, right? We'll yeah. talk to him uh, at 7.30. Well, live. Uh, so that doesn't mean much if you're listening to this at your leisure. And time later. zones and pro- well, are that's, important as well in the that's equation true. here. That's very true. Speaking of times and time zones, we're going into a daylight saving time weekend. Oh. You know that? It's this Sunday. So we lose an hour? Lose an Which hour. Which one? Okay. That's dumb. Spring ahead. Jeez, I hate so it. so over this. Crap. I hate it. And I guess they're getting a lot of pressure, and they continue to resist that pressure to change it. You know, just leave us on standard time, period. Huh. We're, it's it's not an agrarian society anymore. We don't have to worry about the light to harvest our crops. Can we... Can we move past this? So Congress not <laughs> listening to the people, huh? No, yeah. What I a think surprise. that's the headline. It's here. a stunner. Oof. You're right. That is uh, stunning. So yeah, you're gonna lose an hour of sleep again uh, this weekend. Get ready for it. I don't have it to give. Man. So I know. Uh, all right. So a lot going on. Yeah, just a ton of things. A lot of people voted this weekend. In fact, mm-hmm. Uh, I did. I voted, well, it's early voting, but uh, I voted on Friday. I think it was Friday the last day or Saturday for early voting. I don't know. Anyway, I March did. 1st was the last day. Okay. Then that was uh, that was Friday, as a matter of fact. And it was a really good line. I mean, it probably took, I don't know, 45 minutes to get in and vote. Hmm. And it's probably because I procrastinated, wait, waited till the last day wait a minute. You, of you, early voting. Yeah, I know. It's hard to believe. You procrastinated. Hard to you believe. You know what could have sped that process up and gotten you in sooner is if you had written it on a post-it note, a reminder. <laughs> and every day of early voting, you yeah. would have seen that reminder and I maybe was gone in. pretty darn proud of myself, regardless mm-hmm. of the post-it note, that I did it early. Okay. Yeah. So that All was right. enough for me. That was enough. 45-minute wait? Yeah. Good. Isn't that, yeah. Isn't that something? What's uh, on the ballot? I mean, it's just a bunch of local stuff. Some interesting things, like, and sadly, you know, obviously this is going to pass a lot of judges I mean, it that was you know just like, nothing about. And, and most of them a are lot of unopposed, unopposed. And you're just like, yeah, I got it. Okay. Got it. All right. Uh, give me something that I'm interested in, something uh-huh. I know something about, <laughs> would you? Uh, but the one thing I found interesting was there's a measure on the ballot. To eliminate property tax okay. while not raising any other tax around it. I'm like, yes, please. Hey, don't fall for but this. Sadly, it's not it, it's uh, non binding, obviously. It's a stupid Republican Party. Yeah. What do you guys want us point. to talk about at the next Republican convention? Yeah. It's a talking point. It yeah. would be nice if that uh, mm-hmm. made the ballot, but it's not. You know, if it was really right. binding, if it was an actual law. Because when we first moved here, I was excited when I saw that stuff on the ballot. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is yeah. awesome. And then it's I realized it's, it's just not. the marching orders for the Republican Party of Texas. To That's talk all it about. is. Yeah. And there was a bunch of those. Just a bunch of, you know, daydream believer type yeah. initiatives. That's good. That's good. That's fun. Uh, all right. Big weekend for Donald Trump in his race to, to secure the nomination. I mean, he's really for all intents and purposes, done that. Mm. But this was another step along the way. Uh, It was summed up in this rundown. Here's what they had to say on MSNBC, I think it was. In Missouri, where former President Donald Trump won every county. (laughs) Idaho, where Trump swept all 32 of the state's delegates. Trump also won the caucuses in Michigan Mm -hmm. after winning the primary Mm. there earlier this week. 98 to 2%. It was 100 in Michigan, 85 in Idaho, Uh, and what was that one, 98 in Michigan? Yeah, 98 to 2. He won by 96 points in Michigan. He won by about 70 in Idaho. (laughs) And in Missouri, he won... All of it, like everybody. Yeah, all the counties. It's pretty yeah. much unanimous, county wise, at least. But I, I see what you're doing there. You are obviously a mouthpiece for Donald Trump. Yeah. And you are completely mm-hmm. ignoring the last real story. night's results in Washington, in D.C. D.C., yeah. 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 Where, wow, I mean, Nikki Haley stomped him. And maybe mm-hmm. up to 
two thousand people voted. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Sixty-three, thirty-three. Haley yeah. over Trump. So here is. Uh, so congratulations, Nikki. But you got one. Yeah, she did better than I thought she was going to do. Brrr, so much drama. Here's the current Republican delegate count. Very close. Two forty-seven to twenty-four. <laughs> and then DeSantis nine, Ramaswamy three. <laughs> now he can't. I don't think mathematically wrap it up tomorrow. But I think they think this will be over by about the twelfth. Okay. So a week from tomorrow with the last. I don't know. Yeah. And Nikki Haley uh, will still be running. She'll still be like, I she got says a she will. chance. Ja. So uh-huh. I won DC. Yeah. I won the Capitol. So give it up. I love her new nickname, Queen of the Swamp, because she won DC. <laughs> I won I want nice. I want shirts with that. Yeah, that's good. I like that. <laughs> uh so Yeah, so was, was meanwhile, that- we've got a map. Of all the lawsuits against Trump, I mean, they're trying desperately every single thing they can. Correct. Uh, uh, civil trials, criminal trials, yes. they're trying everything. Uh, now, the blue ones have been dismissed, so you can take those off. Okay. Blue and gray, don't worry about. But uh, lots still, still a pending. Lot. Yeah. Um, still going through the appeals process, and then, of course, mm. the red ones. Now, the Colorado... Supreme Court should be coming out today with that rule. Yeah, they said it might be decided uh, as early as today, which would be great if it goes well. Um, And we can finally put this issue to bed once and for all. And then will we have, and I have no idea, will we then have a case law now that we can lean on for Maine and Illinois Mm. and all these other stupid places that are trying to keep him off the ballot? Probably not, because I'll probably make it too narrow for that to happen. Should be acidine. Okay, now we'll hear Maine's uh, <laughs> November 4th. Okay, thank you. That would be helpful. Also, uh, Ronna McDaniel has been hired. Mm. Oh, this is from the Babylon Bee, a breaking, yeah. breaking story mm-hmm. here. Ronna McDaniel has been hired as DNC chair. Yeah. Due to extensive experience defeating Republicans. All right, so she lost her gig <laughs> at the Republican Party <laughs> as the chair over there. Right, but, but bam, it's, it's went right into to- the... Good Other see. parties chair. That's great. So, <laughs> according to the Babylon Bee, anyway, I, definitely uh, qualified. If 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 the definitely qualification is see that Republicans get defeated <sighs> over and over and over, she oversaw that in the bag. And I loved her statement uh, at the end last week was um, something like, "I'm going to continue to fight for Republicans to be elected." Please don't. Are you? <laughs> yeah, Please. give us a break on that if you would, because. <laughs> I mean, we're, we, we're tired of the winning here. We're tired of it. It's just <laughs> happening way too much. Isn't it? You just too much of a good thing. And so hopefully she uh, won't back up that promise. But on Friday now, the CDC released new guidelines for COVID-19. This headline kind of says it all from the Wall Street Journal. It's official. We can pretty much treat COVID like the flu now. Here's a guide. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Finally, there on how many issues, especially with COVID nineteen and the pandemic, that we have said all along. Yeah. I mean, after after that first really uh, somewhat deadly to some people strain of it, and then after that though, people were not dying from it. You would get it. It would feel like the cold or a flu, and then you move on with your life. I mean, it's been that way for a long time. They're finally just admitting it. And that's what they said. Remember, they originally started off 15 days uh, to flatten the curve. Uh, mm-hmm. And 15 days if you get COVID. And then they knocked that down to 10. And then was it 7 or 5? I don't even remember. But now it's... Now it's... Okay, the new COVID guideline. Yeah. Isolate for 24 hours until your fever breaks. And you're good. I mean, that's where oh, we're at. Okay. Because remember how arbitrary everything was. I mean, Fauci admitted <laughs> in front of Congress... That uh, that six feet thing, we just uh, kind of made that one. Yeah, up. they pulled it out of the mm-hmm. rectum. Same with the masks. Everything has been arbitrary, mm-hmm. and and it has proven that their stupid fifteen day guideline was as well. Rectum, darn near killed him. Sorry, I couldn't couldn't leave it. It had to come out. It was just did bubbling, I, boiling inside my brain. <laughs> did I say rectum? I did. Oh, okay. I oh, did. oh no! They pulled okay. it out of the rectum. <laughs> Uh, happy Monday. Wrecked him. <laughs> Darn near killed him. Uh, so Democrats realize the issue with uh, 
illegal aliens right now is really hurting Biden's chances for uh, the general in November. So the White House and the Biden campaign's new strategy is to go after uh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott. It's so weird how they just... All of a sudden, he's... In concert on Friday. Yeah, yeah he's the bad guy now, and we're going to pin everything on him, I guess. It's just... Uh, these people are just so despicable. Uh, so White House spokesperson... Karine Jean-Pierre started the ball rolling Friday. They showed the American people that to them, partisan politics is more important than our border security. Brilliant. When Governor oh. Abbott chooses Can't to use it. migrants as <laughs> political pawns and leave them by the side of the road in, in the dead of winter, okay. what? he shows Republicans are more what? interested in Ooh. politics than solutions. That's good. Read oh it, baby. Read it. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it, we could have put any clip there uh, from this weekend because Abbott, for whatever reason, is now the target of yeah. the left talking points on immigration. Yeah. Very weird. Because he's done a great job waking up the country on this issue, and they don't want him to get any credit for that. Um, and they're not going to, obviously, concede a single point on this. But she had to read that entire response. Mm-hmm. It, you couldn't. I don't know. You couldn't ad lib no, that. No, she couldn't. Response? No, you she couldn't? can't ad lib really? anything. My gosh. And in fact, I should have sent this in. I did not. But it's the same thing with Mayorkas, who was asked about Lake and Riley in Georgia, who was killed allegedly by the illegal alien. He had to sit there. He's on the Sunday <laughs> show looking down at his card. And he never said her name. I noticed that. I should have sent this in. He never said her name. He just kept mm-hmm. looking at, you know, uh, our condolences uh, go to the family, uh, and then, you know, this is a, a larger wow. issue. Uh, couldn't come from the heart. Yeah. Oh, it couldn't It couldn't be actually felt by him. No. There's no empathy there. These people there. are demons, man. Jeez. And Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut was asked about sanctuary cities. Mm. Here's what he had to say about them. As, as the whole sanctuary city movement, did it, did it go too far? Are we seeing a rollback of that? Should there be Good a rollback question. of that? Yeah. Well, you uh, know, we treat immigrants compassionately in Connecticut oh, okay. as well. Um, and <laughs> listen, I think that speaks to the best well, of listen. this country. Ultimately, mm-hmm. this solution has to be on the border and in the mm-hmm. countries that people are fleeing. Oh. Um, I don't think That's it's okay. in the best interest of this country mm-hmm. to push immigrants into the shadows once shadows they are once, here yeah well okay all right i i you know what i've got a solution on how to get immigrants out of the shadows send them back home into the sunlight at, in their home country yeah there it is send then, them they, home they don't have to worry about living in the shadows in america right if you're not in america also this bs about in the shadows they're not in the shadows <laughs> i know right we know where they are their kids go to our schools what is the deal <laughs> here what are you talking about they're in the shadows that's such old speak, and don't let it fool you. They're not in the shadows. Unreal. Uh, what about deporting millions of illegals the way Donald Trump has said he wants to do? Uh, here's Biden's co-chair uh, of her campaign of his campaign this year, Veronica Escobar. Here's what she had to say Listen about deporting people. This. Listen carefully. And let me tell you, it it is impossible to deport every undocumented person in this country. There simply are not the resources, nor is it advantageous to us. It's not advantageous to us. I'm sure you've seen the reports, Jim, that it has been (laughs) immigrant labor, the immigrant workforce that that has actually propped up Mm. our economy. Oh, my God. (sighs) Jeez. Oh, it's agonizing. <laughs> it's impossible, so we shouldn't even try to do it at all. There you go. Uh, we're you a can't-do kind of country here, and we can't do this. So let's not even start down that road. Let's not even try. We can't make it any better. Wow. I mean, is it is it possible to deport every single one? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe you're not going to get all 30 million of them. You don't know till you try. But how do you eat an elephant? <laughs> One bite at a time. So you start the deportation process and let's let's go from there. <laughs> we could certainly make it a hell of a lot better than it is. It's impossible to do that. So we're not going to do anything. That's what we've been doing for the last 40 years. And look where it's gotten us. 
We used to, we've heard this all along. It's impossible. It's impossible. It can't be done. We can't do it. You can't secure the border. You can't close the border. You can't deport people. You can't, 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 can't. <sighs> I'd like to try. Ugh. And what about what about what uh, Joe Biden said to Xi Jinping on the Tibetan plateau when he asked him, uh, "How would you sum up America in one word?" <sighs> Possibilities. Hmm. So we do have some possibilities. Maybe it is possible. Maybe it's not impossible. I mean, they they just contradict themselves all the time. Speak out of both sides of their mouths. They're such hypocrites and liars. It's hard to keep track of it all. And as pressure mounts on Biden with illegal immigration, Republicans are speaking out like Marco Rubio, who was on with Shannon Bream yesterday. Tell Americans about what the realistic path forward is on the border. Well, the realistic path forward, if we want to end this crisis, begins by Joe Biden reversing the executive orders that he made. Every single one of them was designed to reverse the Trump policy. All those executive orders that are basically for the first time in American history, we have a president who who will not detain the people who entered this country illegally. Look, the immigration system in America is complicated, but our laws Mm -hmm. are pretty straightforward. It defines who's allowed to be in the country, and it says if you're here illegally, you should be detained through removal. Mm -hmm. And we used to have exceptions to that. But narrow exceptions, but the majority of people were detained. Now the reverse is happening. Now the exceptions have become the rule. Today, if you enter the United States illegally, you are going to be released. Your chances of being released into the country very quickly are between 85 and 90 percent. Okay? People know this. The word spreads. They come from all over the world now. There are 7.2 million people in this country that have entered over the last three years that are here illegally Mm -hmm. at this moment, entering through different methods and and, and various uh, ways that they've gotten here. That's an unsustainable thing. And all of that was driven. By these changes, you can see it in the numbers beginning in January of 2021 when Joe Biden entered the White House. He needs to reverse and go back to the policies that were in place before then when we didn't have these numbers. Yeah, yeah. And and to his point, we have a graph. Absolutely started in 2021. Let's see what it looked like. So there's the last year of Trump's mm-hmm. presidency, 3.3 3 million. Mm-hmm. And then just look at that staircase climb to a projected number, projected 8.1 million. This year. Uh, yes. This uh, fiscal year. Yeah. yeah. So it was 6.2 million last year. I mean, they, like Trump keeps saying, they don't have any, they don't know. Yeah, oh, and that's, they don't know what the number really is. And this is the ones that uh, we know about. Right. This These is, are the ones that much, have much, encountered. It's much, much worse than that. It's much worse than that. Yeah. And these numbers are from uh, U.S. Immigrations and Customs. So, I mean, this is definitely a low ball compared oh, to where it really is. Without question. Uh, but the, it's advantageous of, of them, of for us. For us, yeah. For them to be here. Oh, yeah. So advantageous. Tell that to the family of Lake and Riley. Oh, my gosh. So many others. So many others. And the people who don't have jobs as a result. Well, they're doing the jobs. No, Americans. Well, they're, no, they're doing the jobs that they've done and sort of taken away from Americans. And Americans don't even try for those anymore. Uh, they don't even bother with that anymore. Because they've been lowballed in that end. You can't make money on it. You can't make enough to support your family. Um, they do because they're used to, I don't know what it was, 50 cents an hour or whatever they made back home. A dollar a day. It's good money to them in comparison. Yeah, and what uh, what's the worst issue for Biden? In other words, which is he um, less competent on? Immigration or the economy? Mm. Because inflation uh, went up again, <laughs> they reported last week. Oh, what is uh, it now? It's now, let's see, according to the U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis, uh, let's see, uh, PCE inflation rose 0.3% in January. It's up 2.4% over the last year. But we always have to make the point. We have to add the caveat that that's after. Yeah, after the nine points it went ridiculous, up. Ridiculous, right? So if they say inflation yeah. is slowing, Jeez. that may be accurate, yeah. but it's still inflation. And when you've jumped <laughs> so high as you have in the last three years, mm-hmm. then of course at some point it's going to, the rate is going to decrease, but it's still going up. Mm-hmm. And I saw a poll uh, that said, like, uh, voters, I think this was across the board, voters trust Trump on the economy. I think it was a margin of, like, four to one over Biden. So that's why I say, if you're Donald Trump, I mean, you've got a couple of really big issues you can mm-hmm. just go at hammer, and hammer them. Right. Immigration and the economy. Yeah. Let's go. 
Uh, all right, let me take a minute and uh, tell you about preborn. As we sit here today, the lives of babies still in the womb hang in the balance. Um, so the most important and pressing issue of our day is the lives of the unborn. They need our help. They need our protection. The ministry of preborn empowers young expectant mothers in crisis to choose life. Preborn has rescued hundreds of thousands of babies through showing the expectant mother an ultrasound. It costs $28 to do that. It's free to the mother, and it's free because, well, because of you, and thank you for your donation. If you can do $28, that's great. If you can do a dollar, that would be greatly appreciated. Maybe you could do $28 a month and sponsor somebody for a full year. Over the uh, past 15 years, preborn centers have counseled over 450,000 women, considering abortion, and over 200,000 babies have been saved. Amazing numbers, but we've got to do more. So, can you help? To donate, dial pound 250. Say the keyword baby. That's pound 250, keyword baby. Or go to preborn.com slash pound. That gray is unleashed. On Friday, brain-dead Joe Biden hosted Italian Prime Minister uh, Giorgia Maloney at the White House. And Wait, it was brilliant as always. It's not uh, Georgia Malloy? No, it's not Georgia Malloy. No. Oh, when did they it change? <laughs> well, at birth. At birth. This guy sucks in so many ways. Yeah, check this out. Well, Prime Minister Maloney, thank you for being here again. Prime Minister Malloy. And I have to admit to you, as she walked in the door, mm-hmm. we're good friends. Oh, I yeah. played Ray Charles, Georgia, as she walked in the door. Now, yeah, that's not her Ray name. Charles, Georgia, so. but anyway. Anyway, but anyway, I've said too much because I don't even know her name. It's Georgia, but not. But it sounds somewhat like Georgia. So, uh, uh, anyway. <laughs> Even if her name was Georgia Malloy, <laughs> the fact that you play Georgia is really not that adorable. And I know you think it is. I know you think it's charming and it's you're showing your brilliance and how sharp you are. Yeah. <laughs> A, he's not the one that thought of it, even if it were accurate. And uh, B, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares. Uh, it's just stupid. <laughs> But he then discussed airdrops into Gaza or someplace. We're not sure where the drops are going. Uh, At least he's not. In the coming days, we're going to join with our friends in Jordan and others in providing airdrops of of, uh, additional food and supplies into Ukraine. Into Ukraine. Okay. You're you're doing airdrops of food into Ukraine now? Probably. (laughs) Probably (laughs) Of course. uh, They might be, but he meant... Gaza, they're doing airdrops of food into Gaza. So that's good. Yeah, don't worry about it though. He's sharp as attack. People can't keep up with him. Mentally, physically, doesn't matter. The guy is just so vigorous. You want to take a? Uh, can we take a side trip just for a quick moment here? Because I think you're going to love these tweets. <laughs> John Fetterman has been very busy on Twitter uh, in relation to Israel and Gaza, mm-hmm. and I, I don't know what's up with the. There he is. Love the guy. Can you? Put up the first tweet. Pat, you've got to see this. The man is on fire for Israel. So if we could please put up uh, the tweets. Uh, full screen seven, uh, I believe. There we go. All right, so a headline comes out there. Mm. I don't know if you can, well. Israeli military review of Gaza aid convoy. Uh, convoy, okay. <laughs> Israeli military oh. review of Gaza aid convoy deaths finds most killed in a stampede. Okay. Oh. So, so in other words, it was reported that right. Israel just opened fire on innocent uh, Palestinians, right? right, right. right? That's that? exactly how it was reported, and I, I didn't know the story, really, right. so you're like, right. you why see, did you, that happen? Yeah, like the headline, I think, on Thursday or Friday was that, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> the reports are that Israeli yeah. soldiers opened fire on innocent Indiscriminately civilians. Indiscriminately just started shooting so, people and, in line for food. And so it was a stampede for the food. Oh uh, my gosh. So so Fetterman, oh uh, he put up that, that headline, and then he yeah. said... Um, uh, in, in, re- in response to that, demand Hamas to surrender. Demand release every hostage. Uh, demand to seize billions of dollars Hamas stole from Gaza. Demand those stolen billions to rebuild Gaza and compensate true victims, uh, Israelis and Palestinians. Demand hmm. Hamas eliminated or permanently exiled. 
Nice. So there's that. Okay, that, that's okay. Just, that he's just getting started. Okay. Put up the next one, please. Hmm. Uh, because there's the headline: Israel reported boycott ceasefire talks uh, in Cairo over Hamas rejection of hostage list. Okay. So Fetterman then uh, responds. At any point, Hamas could have ended this burgeoning tragedy to surrender and release every hostage. Now, That's they're unwilling true. to provide a list of any surviving hostages. Right. Hamas is uh, anathema to peace for Gaza. Hamas instigated and owns this humanitarian catastrophe. Wow. Nice. And he wasn't done. Jeez. Oh, What's the next one? Let's get one more here from John Fetterman. I mean... He's been hot on Twitter here this weekend. This is weekend. really strong support for Israel. Uh, let's see here. He he, uh, he tweeted out, uh, and I guess we don't have this, I'll always take the word of our ally over a group of cowards that hide in tunnels behind civilians and hold children, mm -hmm. women, and elderly hostage since October 7th. Back then, they also blamed the hospital rocket hit on Israel. Right. It was proven to be a Hamas ally. Oh, that's great. John Fetterman, uh, pretty senator good. from Pennsylvania. Pretty good. Been active on Twitter this weekend. Jeez. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So well, what's our president doing? All so. this means it was time for another vacation for him. <laughs> yes, it was. In Delaware. Okay, yeah. And I think we all dream of vacationing in Delaware, don't we? I mean, it, At top of the list. It, yeah. It's like if, a bucket list thing. It's Hawaii, you know, St. Mm -hmm. Bart's, or Delaware, you know, and you're always <laughs> kind of <laughs> running that through in your mind. Yeah. Which one this Which time? one? Ah, should I choose <laughs> Delaware Again? Anyway, uh, anyway, I've said too much on Delaware. On his way out on Friday, he was asked about Hunter's congressional testimony last week. Speaker Johnson has accused you of lying repeatedly about your interactions with your son and brother's business no. partners. What's your reaction? Speaker Johnson says him? you lied. Don't read the record of every single witness. These guys yeah. gotta stop this. But thing. you did interact with their partners. I did not interact with yes, their partners. You yes, you did. Dinner or lunch oh. Look at look at that. You can tell he's lying through his communist teeth. Mm -hmm. You can absolutely see it written all over him. Yeah. Wow, he's still denying it. Yeah, he's Incredible. denying it despite the fact that his own mm -hmm. son Hunter. Uh, on Wednesday, behind that closed door meeting with congressional leaders, testified about it. He absolutely said that uh, Joe was with uh, Hunter's, uh, I can't even say this, Kazakhstani, Russian, mm -hmm. and Ukrainian benefactors. Okay. Um, uh, an executive uh, at uh, Burisma, a Ukrainian uh, executive, uh, attended. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we have the, the picture of them playing golf with the business partners. And mm. so, in other words, the question was that uh, Speaker Johnson has accused you of lying about you saying you haven't been meeting with or you never met with uh, Hunter and James, uh, business partners. And all he did was continue to he lie. He just continues to lie. Well, he then just I keeps guess, lying. So then, yeah. then did Hunter lie to Congress? So someone's lying here, Joe. It's yeah. either you or your son. <laughs> Does not care. Ooh. Does not care. Ugh. Then he tried to fake. He fake us out with that fake jog oh, again. Oh yes. Yeah, a couple of times. Here's here's one. Okay. Uh oh. He sees kids. Oh, oh no, he sees little kids. Oh okay. Oh no, uh, little kids. Hop over there. Oh, oh. <laughs> please. <laughs> Hold on. I think the kid. Ah! Like, if I remember, she backs up or something. Like, oh my gosh, here comes the. Creep. Oh no. Oh no. Is yeah. Oh, the pink. Yeah, the girl in the pink coat's like. Eh. I don't blame her. Yep. I don't blame her. And then another. <laughs> another little effort here. <laughs> what is that? So bad. What is that, old man? <laughs> All right. Be <laughs> Do we have time to put up the uh, tweet that the Border Patrol Union put up while he was in Delaware? Put this up. This is, uh, oh, gosh. Okay. They kind of mock him. I oh, mean, absolutely. more than kind of. Yeah. Board Air Force, Air Force One, take nap. <laughs> Wake up in a place called Brownsville. <laughs> Read large teleprompter message. It's all Trump's fault. <laughs> uh, Board Air Force One. Ask who people in green uniforms were. <laughs> Told they strap illegal aliens. Express horror. Take nap. Wake up. Call a lid. Hit the beach. Take nap. <laughs> Brilliant. Nicely done from the Border Patrol Union. Pat Gray Unleashed. All right, 
We've got some tweets here. Dirty Mule tweets. Pat, if we do away with daylight savings time, okay. how wilt thou knoweth when to harvest thine crops? <laughs> right. Right. Thou makes a goodest point. Uh, <laughs> thou shan't harvest thy crops. Oh. Because you wilt not knoweth when to do them or doeth them. Doeth. <laughs> Yeah, so, see, that's kind of a old-timey kind yeah. of, we're, we don't need that stuff anymore. I like it. <laughs> anymore. That's good. Along with the old English. So, uh-huh. nicely done, Dirty Mule. Uh, Fury and en- Energy. In the name of compassion, we need to make America a third world nation. Yeah, they're working on it. <laughs> I got news for you. Uh, they're, they're pretty much doing it. <laughs> Troy Vicker, if we don't have the resources to deport every illegal alien, how can we possibly have the resources to take care of them here? Amen. Brilliant point. Mm-hmm. And, you know, which is the longer term financial outlay, by the way? Uh, let's see. We're going to support them the whole time they're here, their entire lives. And their children? And their children's children? Hmm. The Pickled Squirrel tweets, I bet if 30 million people didn't pay their taxes, the government would find each and every one. <laughs> yeah, as long so as they're true. citizens, they would. Yes. Yeah. With the illegals, the 30 million illegals here already, so they already don't true. pay income taxes. Uh, Lutheran housewife. I think Donald Trump's campaign slogan should be three simple words. Mm. Send back them. Send back them. <laughs> if somebody do that Ooh, without real. permissions, we send, ba- we send back them. We send back them. <laughs> right. That's uh, Felipe Calderon's theory, anyway. <laughs> That's how Mexico deals with illegals. Uh, sure is. In their country. Yeah. We can't, though. We can't. No. America is, uh, we're handcuffed, and we have to accept everything that happens to us. And just like it. And love it. Too nice. And then just take care of everybody that comes. Uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland showed up at a black church yesterday to rip voter ID laws, okay. <laughs> among other things. But here's what he had to say. The right to vote is still under attack. Uh-huh. And that is why the Justice Department is fighting back. That is why one of the first things I did when I came into office was to double the size of the voting section of the Civil Rights Division. That is why we are challenging efforts by states and jurisdictions to implement discriminatory, burdensome, and unnecessary restrictions on access to the ballot. Pause it for a second. Including those related to... Let's take that one at a time. Roll that back Mm. uh, about 10 seconds or so. Let's... uh, What is discriminatory about or burdensome about bringing your ID to the voting booth? How racist is that? Again, it's the theory, I guess, that blacks don't have IDs. Honestly, I would love to know. I would love a man on the street thing. You just pick 100 random. You can even have, if if there are cases that black people don't have ID, then you can have, you can pick 100 black individuals Mm -hmm. and ask them. Yeah. Do you have an ID? Well, they do. Exactly. And 100 it's wh- out of 100. It's why 82% of blacks favor voter ID. They don't have any problem with it. It's, insane. it's these a-hole white people <laughs> who think they're not capable of going to the DMV to get a driver's license or an ID of some sort. And by the way, why is it Come okay on. for Democrats to show up at churches? Particularly yeah. black oh churches. Oh my gosh. And talk over politics. Over and over and over, why, yeah. Why is that acceptable? Right. Because if a Republican shows up at a church and gives a speech in a similar context like that, it's like, oh my they lose gosh, their tax exempt status. separation of church and state, we yeah. should investigate this church that hosted that Republican. Yep. <sighs> you know that's what would happen. Uh, all right, so listen listen to this. Let's go, go back a, a few seconds, so let's play this. Oh, it drives me out of my mind. To implement discriminatory, burdensome, and unnecessary, unnecessary. restrictions on <laughs> access to the ballot, I'm talking about including voting. those related to mail-in voting, uh, mm. the use of drop boxes and voter ID oh, requirements. Yeah, we don't need we any of that. That is why we are working to block the adoption of discriminatory oh redistricting plans <sighs> that dilute the vote of black voters uh, and other voters of color. What garbage. What racist garbage. That is. <laughs> so they're trying desperately to hang on to the Dropbox oh, thing. Oh, definitely. Because that's a scam that they absolutely love. 
Huh? They can they can harvest all kinds of votes it's, and just dump them in there. It's how they're in power today. And nobody checks. They get counted, and they win. Man, they're not letting go of that. The only reason we had drop boxes, the only reason in 2020 was because of the pandemic. We don't need drop boxes now. Go to the voting booth. And if you can't do that, well, I'm sorry. You, you can't vote then. Or apply for a mail-in ballot, but let's make sure you are who you say you are. Such a weird oh, grouping there, too. It is. Where he said, I don't know if you can find it, Joe. It's not the end of the world. But he put together, he said, mail-in uh, voting, yeah. uh, drop boxes, mm-hmm. and you know this requirement to show your ID. Uh, like yeah. What a horrible thing. <sighs> Like, it's something as, as inconsequential as voting for our leaders. Why do you need to prove who you are? Yeah, this is... Jeez. <sighs> cool. So then, on MSNBC, they the guests discussed the biggest threat Ooh. to voting in November. Oh, we need to know this. Yeah, we do. Joining us now, Professor of Political Science at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, Tom Schaller, oh, and good. journalist and yeah. opinion writer, an Paul expert. Waldman. Their new book, okay. Out Tomorrow, is entitled White Rural Rage, Rural. The Threat to American Democracy. Oh, and Tom, we'll start with you. Uh, why are white rural voters yeah, a us. threat to democracy at this point? You would yeah, think, why? as we pointed out, yeah. looking at Joe Biden's mm. background and Donald Trump's, that, that the opposite would be true. I mean, we lay out the fourfold interconnected threat that white rural voters pose mm. to the okay. country. First of all, and we show... 30 polls and national studies to demonstrate right. this. So we provide yeah, these the receipts guys twins? in chapter six. Positive the most racist. I'm sorry, I'm a little distracted here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they're at least brothers, right? No. No, they're not? No. <laughs> Look a lot alike. No, they're just liberal <laughs> eggheads who are going to tell us why they, yeah. as white men, uh-huh. suck. Yeah. And why so, other white, white people, especially those rural, who live in yeah. rural areas, oh my gosh, those hicks, they don't deserve to vote. Yeah, rewind that just a little bit, because you get started yeah. there, because right. we're just by default racist, because mm-hmm. we're white and we're rural. Okay, here it is. I mean, we lay out the fourfold interconnected fourfold. threat that white Four. rural voters pose to the country. First okay. of all, and First. we show... 30 polls and national studies to demonstrate uh-huh. this. So we provide the receipts in Chapter 6. Oh. They're the most racist, uh-huh. racist, xenophobic, anti-immigrant, anti-gay, geodemographic uh-huh. positive uh-huh. country. Oh Defined so by whom? All uh, right. And what's the criteria you're using? <laughs> my gosh, these people are terrible human beings. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. So what, what Let's are we doing? Racist, else? xenophobic, racist. anti-immigrant, anti-gay. Uh, okay. Okay. Geodemographic group in the country. Second, they're the most conspiracist group. Mm. QAnon support mm. and subscribers. Oh yeah. Election denialism, oh. COVID denialism, and scientific skepticism. Uh. Obama birtherism. Third, oh, okay. anti-democratic sentiments. They don't believe in an independent press, free speech. They're most likely what? to say the president should be able to act unilaterally what without you, any checks from what, Congress, where are you getting or the this? courts, what? or the bureaucracy. They're also Garbage. the most strongly white nationalist and white Christian oh. nationalist. And fourth, they are most likely to excuse or justify violence as an. <laughs> acceptable alternative to peaceful public this discourse. guy is shoving everything wow. he can into wow. the bag and what is the yep. one thing we say above all else democrats accuse republicans of everything of they're doing everything that they're doing and so go through that again mm-hmm. and listen carefully because everything is a playbook for the new democrat yeah i mean to go oh mm. <sighs> agonizing, man. And it's man. only Monday. Agonizing. It's, who? Jeez. Honestly, should we? Can you cue that up? As bad as I it mean, gets. So I, I, can you please play that little chunk again, Joe? And as you're listening to this guy, I want you to think of Democrats today mm-hmm. doing all of this because it's exactly mm-hmm. what they do. Right down to the violence and wanting a president to go through Congress, go around Congress. Play this, please. It would be true. I mean, we lay out the fourfold interconnected threat that white rural voters pose okay. to the country. Liberal, First of all, liberal and we show 30 polls and national studies Urban progressives, tell this. us. We provide the receipts in Chapter 6. Okay. They're the most racist, Liberal, xenophobic, liberal, anti-immigrant, anti-gay, liberal. geodemographic group yep. in the country. Yep. Second, they're liberal. the most conspiracist group. 
QAnon support okay. and subscribers, yeah. election denialism, oh, COVID liberals. denialism, mm -hmm. and scientific liberals. skepticism. And you ignore Obama the science. Burgerism. Third, anti-democratic sentiments. <laughs> they don't believe in an independent press, liberals. free speech. They're most likely liberals. to say the president should be able to act unilaterally you, without any checks from Congress. You or the want courts, the government to be in bed with social also media. The Talk most about strongly free white nationalist and white Christian they nationalist. Are. And fourth, yeah. they are most likely to excuse yeah. or justify violence as an uh, acceptable alternative to gosh. Black Lives Matter and Tifa, anyone? Right. This guy. Oh my gosh. Get out of my face. That's all they did that whole year was justify violence. Because they had a legitimate gripe. That's what the pro-Palestinian crowd is doing right Thank now. You. Thank you. They're excusing mass murder of innocent people in the name of, well, they had it coming to them. Did they? I tell you. Wow. These people. Oh, my. Oh, my God. And it's only <laughs> Monday. Ooh-wee. Yeah, and it's... Not even we're not even done with the first hour on Monday. <laughs> Help us. Uh, so yeah, agonizing, <sighs> agonizing. Maybe this is just a little bit of an indication of why Biden's starting to lose support uh, from even his own voters, people who voted for him in 2020. We'll get into this oh, in just a second. But who can you trust? This is something we talk about a lot. Government leaders repeatedly fail us. Self-appointed experts have led us astray. Distrust in so-called authorities is spreading like a bad cold. We can't quite shake it. But you're not as powerless as they want you to believe. When there's no one to depend on, it's time to rely on yourself. And if you're not sure where to start, let me make a suggestion. Go to my website, preparewithpat.com. Get a four-week emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply. You'll get $60 off right now. $60 off. My Patriot Supply has helped millions of Americans reach self-reliance. Now, you can try to do this in a couple of different ways. You can do it gradually, slowly, by picking up something extra every time you go grocery shopping or whatever. Well, if you started that in you know 1970, that's probably great. If you're starting now, that's not so great. Time is running out. You want to make sure you're prepared. And these food kits offer delicious meals, drinks, snacks, they provide over 2,000 calories per day. They're sealed inside heavy-duty packaging, and they last up to 25 years in storage. So go to preparewithpat.com. Protect your future with as many kits as you need. These kits are shipped fast, free, and they arrive in unmarked boxes, so nobody's going to know that your house is the place that's prepared because you don't want people to necessarily know that when the stuff hits the fan. My Patriot Supply. When you order by 3 p.m. today, your food uh, your food kit will ship, ship that same day, and you'll save $60 per. Preparewithpat.com. Pat Gray Unleashed. All right. Uh, looks like 10% of Joe Biden's 2020 voters now back former President Donald Trump. According to a new poll, ten percent—that's pretty solid. That's interesting. That's uh, that's a lot. Now, ninety-seven percent of voters who cast their ballot for Trump in twenty twenty still plan to vote for him. Biden is only getting eighty-three percent of his previous voters. That's down seventeen percent. That's huge. That's enough to sway the election. Now, not all of them. Only ten percent are going to Trump, but that that could well be enough. To uh, tip the scales in Trump's fi in Trump's favor, I guess some of these though stragglers, maybe opting for RFK Jr. Who knows where they're going? But only eighty three percent have stuck with him, uh, and overall Trump has a five point lead right now, forty eight forty three according to this particular poll. Uh, it's a Siena New York Times Siena College poll, so it's not like well that's some right wing coop mm -hmm. that's doing that survey. New York Times, Siena College. 36% of voters, 36% approve of how Biden is handling his job as president. 36% approval? That's too high. Again, New York Times, but that's amazing. 43% of voters say they think his policies have hurt them personally. That's too low. Man, but it's still pretty surprising. Yeah. 
Trump has earned voters from blocks that traditionally vote Democrat. According to the New York Times, women are equally split between Trump and Biden, while Trump gained a lead among Latinos. 46 to 40 percent of Latinos uh, are now planning to vote for Donald Trump. Between that and the black voters that have jumped ship from the Democrats, realizing, hey, these guys are just in it for their own power. Mm. They're not helping me one iota. Uh, that that could be that could be the difference in this election cycle. Keep your fingers crossed. And that's interesting when you have the attorney general of the regime having to go out to black churches. Yeah, right. They're clearly concerned They're on the Biden team. They're definitely. Definitely worried. And they Good. should be. Good. Yeah, they should be worried. They should be a lot more worried than they are. Right. I mean, it should be obvious that, that this guy, he should be 40 points behind Trump right now. 50 points behind Trump. I mean, obviously, you're not going to get everybody. Just like, you know, the, the headline that Drudge keeps running when Trump crushes all competition in these primaries. Well, not every single Republican wants Trump. <laughs> okay. All right. Granted, you're never going to get 100% of uh, all the people. Well, unless you're in, where was it? Was it Michigan? Oh, okay. Yes. Unless, <laughs> unless you're in Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. Missouri got 100% counties. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, not every person, though, in every right. county, but sure. he won every sure. county. Right. So, uh, incredible. All right. Coming up, we got to tell you about these uh, 14 locations Russia has apparently targeted for nuke strikes, just in case. You wait, know, wait, all hell breaks loose. Hold on, hold on, back up. Mm-hmm. Is this, can you tell us which country you're talking about? Well, I'm talking about the United States of America. Oh, please. yay! Yes, the 14 U.S. locations that are targeted for nuke strikes, and uh, just a little hint: I've lived in many of them, and and still do. Uh, Wait, actually. I don't so need that's that. Fun. I don't need that that's tease. That's fun. No, that's fun. Hey, congratulations. It's your neighborhood, <laughs> Keith. <laughs> All right, cool. Oh, Can't man. wait for that. Also, over the weekend, Libs of TikTok posted a disturbing video oh, out of a high school in Oklahoma. This is Yeah, we may not. Sick. We don't have time for this. Yeah, right I'm not going to play that okay, right okay, now. Okay, I'm yeah. just... Uh, it's coming up. Okay. Uh, is... You won't believe yeah. what... I, I don't know. Somebody agreed to what is Who happening agreed to, to this uh, you know, in our schools. It's not happening. It's happened. What has happened to our society? It's now past tense. Now, now this insanity is in the rearview mirror. It's not. Whoa! Look what's coming down the road, or look what we're living through. Uh, I mean, it's this particular thing, though. Uh, this did is, they sit around in the administration office and think, "Hey, you know, it'd be great. Let's let's do this." And everybody thought, yeah, that sounds fun. That's cool, yeah. That's cool. That'd be great. Uh, We'll show you what kind of depravity ensued. Yep. Coming up. Pat Gray Unleashed. Pat Gray is here Uh on the Blaze Radio Network. Welcome to it. March 4th already. Sheesh. Yeah, what'd you do for Pat Gray New Year yesterday? Because a lot of Pat heads were on social media, on Twitter, uh, <laughs> celebrating. Yeah, yeah. And you were uh, as well, right? Yeah. Well, um, we, uh, the whole family and I went out drinking just to celebrate. I mean, it's New Year's. You know, normally we don't do that. Uh, but <laughs> since it was Pat Gray New Year, we had to throw caution to the wind. <laughs> That's what I was doing yesterday with Steve Baker. <clears throat> I Were you was really? out drinking, celebrating hmm. Pat Gray New Year. All right. Nice. Steve Baker joining us in uh, 30 about minutes. Half hour. Yeah. yeah. So that'll be fun. Um, also, since it is March, we've got March Madness mm-hmm. coming up this month. Should be fun. Um, BYU basketball has done what I thought BYU football was going to do, but uh, they have definitely surprised everybody uh there and i I just noticed keith Mm -hmm. that nebraska is doing really well in basketball as well that's not normally a basketball school no in fact 21 uh, and 9 overall yeah uh, byu's 21 and 8 overall so nebraska football has the distinction of being having the longest drought for a power five school from the from bowls Okay, a bowl (laughs) drought really bowl appearance oh wow i mean it's been like seven years now Oof. anyway that's, it shows you okay. too many bowls, really. Yeah. So that's number one. 
Nebraska basketball uh, has the distinction of having never won an NCAA tournament game. They've never won a tournament game? Not, Not even game. in the first round? They've won the NIT tournament, but, but they've never won an NCAA tournament Did they win game. the NIT tournament when it was the tournament, or was that no, after? No, 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 no. No, no oh, okay. when it was the stepchild. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is, yes, a very big deal. Wow, yeah. Uh, I think currently they're, they're probably... They're doing well. Fourth in the Big Ten. Yeah, they're 11 yeah. and 8 in the Big Ten. Uh-huh. Uh, that's great. They got over twenty wins or at twenty wins at this point. Twenty-one and nine. Twenty. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I keep up with them. I don't sit there and watch every game. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been a very because yeah. remember they beat Purdue when Purdue was number one. They beat them. Yeah, Purdue. And then they beat this year. somebody else. Uh, really good. Shows you how much I keep up with it. Uh, but there was another. Not quite like football, but no. You know. But yeah, let's go. You know, but that's not a basketball school. You never think of Nebraska. No, we're a volleyball school. We yes. know, we've been over this, bro. <laughs> we're a volleyball. It's a school. definite volleyball school. <laughs> uh, but the Cougars had a great week last week. They beat Kansas in Lawrence. Yeah, that's right. And then they beat uh, TCU. Came back from down seventeen at the half and won it by twelve. Outscored them by twenty nine points in the second half. So, uh, going well there. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, Selection Sunday, so I think, is on St. Patrick's 17th. Day. 17th, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. The 17th is a Sunday. That's too bad. Oh, that's another big drinking day Another big drinking day, yeah. Oh, huh. All right. <laughs> cool. All right, so we got some tweets here. Anthony Osh, it is indeed impossible to keep up with the president in the same way it's impossible to keep up with the one wandering stories of a toddler. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, the wandering, <laughs> the wandering, yeah. the wandering, it, yeah. or wandering. Oh, Did he mean wandering, wandering or wandering? I don't know. They he both spelled work. It wandering. They but both work. That's what I thought. Anna for real tea uh, tweets: How to lure Biden to a debate with Trump? Tell him there'll be ice cream and an audience of prepubescent, prepubescent girls. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 <clears throat> Stephen Dears, Biden's fake jog toward the kids was the longest and most vigorous example yet. Let's see. This. Mm, that says a lot, doesn't it? Watch this. I mean, he <clears throat> stops on a dime. Yeah, once he, he sees the kids. Oh! Huh? Oh, my God. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Uh-huh. Let me run over to you real uh-huh. quick like a bunny here. Uh-huh. Okay. Who can that I That girl sniff? in the pink ain't having it. Who, she knows who, trouble. Who can I see? Stranger sniff? danger. Look out! Look I'm out! I'm out of yep, here. Yep, she's backing up like Ooh. crazy. Ooh. Ugh. And he's been told not to do that. And he does it anyway every single time. <laughs> oh, man. Stay away. Uh, caffeinated Texan. Joe has Ukraine on the brain. Understandable, he knows where the laundered money comes from. Uh-huh. Joe's licked cone. White rural rage coming to a dollar bargain book table near you. <laughs> yes. Alan Blodgett. Has anyone pulled the dead voters in those numbers on who will vote for Trump instead of Biden? That's the most important demographic. Uh, for Democrats, it is. Yeah. Absolutely for Democrats. Uh, let's see. Giblets. Pat, it's mostly peaceful genocide. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Uh, let's see. Pale, stale male. White rule rage. Is the Democrat iron law of projection in print? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hundred percent. Yes, indeed. Uh, not of this world tweets new liberal talking points. Everything I do bounces off me and sticks to you. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are, but what am I? Yeah. That's pretty much the Democrats. <laughs> uh, I'm a licking butter. I'd like to hear Tom Brokaw say white rule rage. Oh, what? no. What? what you know? oh, okay. All right. Let's see how I can handle that. Uh, Tom Brokaw, white rural rage. What? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh no. Just, what's I'm go- looking for the right, right accompaniment for it. And I think I have that. Tonight from Jalalabad. We'll, in Jalalabad, we'll talk about white rural rage. <laughs> white rural rural rage. What? Tonight. From the NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. White World Rage from the outskirts of Jalalabad and Louisville, Kentucky. The White World Rage tonight. <laughs> oh, who wrote this? <laughs> who wrote this script for Tom? <laughs> Fix it. It's uh, angry white men. 
Yeah. Fix it. Yeah. Who live in the suburbs or <laughs> the sparsely par- populated areas. <laughs> popular. Oh, no. That's still a problem. Yeah. Sparsely. Sparsely. Popular. <laughs> so over the weekend, uh, we were telling you about uh, just a sick, disturbing event at an Oklahoma high school. I... I don't know what the deal is here. This is so ill-advised, so insane, so sick, somebody and twisted, yeah, somebody perverted in the school administration here <laughs> in Oklahoma. They has thought a weird fetish. You know, it'd be a good idea is to have kids suck the toes of other kids, oh. or even adults. I think some of them are sucking the toes of teachers. Or have something we confirmed here. that? This is yeah. so bizarre. Bizarre. Think, no, yeah, it's not confirmed. I don't think it was. Teachers. We don't know if it's I don't adults. Think it's I think originally no, the, we thought it was teachers. Yes, originally we thought it was adults, but the school did come out and say they were sucking oh, on yeah. other students. Oh, well, that students. makes it perfectly fine. Then. Now, now so. we're good. they're sucking the toes yeah. of other students. Oh, okay, okay, so why? All right, now I get see, how this, this happened. Is, this is our white rural <laughs> rage. Yeah. See, we're just looking for stuff to get 100%. upset One hundred percent. And by the right. way, it was done for charity. We got oh, it. There we you got go. it. Play the video. So. You're getting ahead of us here. Oh, God. Stop. Okay, that's... So that video is making so the rounds. He is uh, we got... Oh, gosh. Okay. And uh, somebody's doing an excited yeah. play-by-play on it, and I don't... Oh, my gosh. Why would you do this? We're, we're, Why we're, we're, uh, this is hell. We're in hell. Oklahoma. That is sick. That's really... So so after, after people like us started getting upset about this video, <laughs> yeah, that's when the school the school responded. posted something. Yeah, let's see their th- to make it all okay. They fixed it perfectly, understandable let's see what and we got acceptable. Here. Okay, What's all the participants in the assembly were students who signed up for the game they played ahead of time. Mm-hmm. So, what is your problem? <laughs> so your so suck your rage. toe all the way to Mexico. <laughs> That's what we tried to do. There you go. We were just doing the old expression. Is that a problem? No Deer Creek faculty or staff Mm -hmm. participated in any of the games during this Clash of Classes assembly. (laughs) Clash of of classes. Many dedicated students gave generously of their personal time to achieve this momentous accomplishment. Sucking somebody's toes is a momentous accomplishment? Can I can I just for the record, um, mm. there there will uh, in a completely unrelated story a week from now at that Deer Creek uh, High School, mm-hmm. uh, there's going to be an outbreak of uh, strep throat, hoof and mouth disease. Yep, <laughs> and I, I, mean, I, I know this because I know a former DJ who got strep throat in much uh-huh. that fashion. Really? Really? Yeah. Weird. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, it's because it's gross. Is, yeah. Is why. That's, it's gross. I, I mean, were they, were they at least, I don't know, wiped off with Clorox wipes or something? Does that make it better? No, it does. It I, doesn't. See, I, I it just makes it a tad more sanitary. I don't know how to word this. So gross. But yeah, it was, athlete's foot was involved. We would like to thank all of the patrons, businesses, and sponsors who contributed to the success of this year's wonderful week of fundraising. That's the <sighs> so hold that's on the thing from the school. That's if you think a bake sale is excuse. good enough, then that's just your white rural rage showing. Yeah, right. Why are you trying to limit the creativity in fundraising? I mean, honestly, I could think of four billion other things to wow. to fundraise off yeah. of before you get down to toe sucking your peers. Yeah, especially. Um, <laughs> I bet that school was shut down because of COVID and the six <laughs> feet rule. Yeah, so I bet it was. we started at six feet rule, and then now we're at toe now sucking. Now you suck six feet. Yes. Um, two from this person. I see what you did two, there. Two from no, another person. Good, dude. That's two, really two more good. From that's good stuff. Yeah. Isn't that good? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it's just so sick. I mean, what? And I, twisted. I, Why? How? How? <sighs> what timeline is this? I don't even know how you get there. I don't know how you get there. I don't know from, how you get there. Hey, either. let's raise money to the best thing is toe sucking. Yeah. And what are they? Okay, you know what? I mm. want to know what they're raising money for. And then it's probably for, for garbage for the cool for the school to think eh, it's cool if it's students on student. If if that's fine, that's fine. If they're sucking the toes of other student, as long as it's not an, an adult. Yeah. Hey, seriously, you think that makes it okay? Bizarre. Here we go. Okay, so really crazy. 
Let's see. Oh, wait. Now, this headline says... Oh, it's better. Okay, see? Again, the white rural White range. rural? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, they're licking the toes. We said sucking. Man, oh. We are coloring the news is what we're doing. So, you're way out of bounds here. You're way off base. It it was licking, not sucking. Yep. It was other students, not adults. Not adults. Okay. okay. And it was for charity. It's for charity. Everything's fine. So. All right. I think we're good. <laughs> I think we... Shame on us for just being Nothing to see angry here. for Break no it up. reason. Why have you bring Break it up? Break it up. I don't even know why we brought it up. That was silly of us. Wow. <laughs> they, they disable all their social media accounts. I wonder why. They, huh. Yeah. You, wow. you don't suppose they were getting a little bit of flack? So they, they, <laughs> they raised uh, over $150,000 for not your average Joe coffee. What? I don't know. Wait. I, I don't, like, is that for guys, real? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just reading an article. At uh, the Fox affiliate in Oklahoma City. Oh my gosh! So for congr- a coffee shop, I, I I have no idea what not your average Joe coffee is, but congratulations, <laughs> you licked your uh, classmates' toes uh, for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Cool. Cool. Right. Well, there you nice. go. Nice. All right. Well, <clears throat> see, we went off the rails there for a minute, but we brought it right, right back, back on the tracks. Right. We're right back on. We're good. That's fine. Everything's fine. This is Don't worry about strange, it, America. Strange land. Oh my gosh, it's just so bizarre. Meanwhile, uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin has warned yeah. the West that uh, there'll be nuclear war if uh, the alliance, the NATO alliance, sends troops to Ukraine. Of course, and so then they leaked out a list <laughs> of the targets in the United States of America, and. It includes the naval station in Norfolk, uh, the U.S. and the world's largest naval base, located in Norfolk, Virginia, has the highest concentration of U.S. Navy forces. Around 100,000 air operations are carried out there, uh, about 300 a day. Wow. <clears throat> Another clear target uh, is located in Camden, Georgia. Camden County, Georgia. You know where that is, Keith? I think it's south. Uh, Barksdale Air Base. United States Air Base uh, in Bossier Parish, Bossier Parish, Louisiana. The base is home to the U.S.'s second bomb wing. Then you got your Whiteman Air Force Base located near Knob Noster, Missouri. One of my favorite places uh, on the planet, Knob Noster. How many times have I spoken of Knob Noster? It's just got a special place in my heart. Uh, The United States Strategic Command, uh, as you might imagine, would be a target. The VLF array in Lua Lua Lai, Hawaii. Kirtland Air Force Base, which is in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The 21st Force uh, Support Squadron in um, Colorado. Warren Air Base in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota. Hill Air Force Base in Utah, located in Davis County, Utah. Malmstrom Air Force Base, which I've also lived near both of those, uh, located in Great Falls, Montana. And the Naval Radio Station in Jim Creek. So it looks like we're safe here in DFW. There's nothing to worry about. Oh, you had me worried. Not even, not even, you said live there now. Yeah, not now. I guess not. I guess oh. Dallas-Fort Worth is perfectly fine. We're not among the 14 main targets. So hold on. I'm, I'm kind of taking that personally. Like... Yeah, what what do we do wrong what, here that you don't even up? care about us? Come on, Pooty Poo. I mean, are you saying that we don't have something we're targeting? I'm not asking you to target DFW. I'm just right. saying, hey, what's You're just the a little insulted yeah, now that we're not you. on the list. Thank yeah, you. I hear you. I feel it too. <laughs> Feels like a, a little bit of it's disrespecting a going on. It's a slight. On. Yeah. Yeah. How dare you disrespect us like that? <laughs> All of a sudden, <laughs> the silo is. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a tornado warning. <laughs> Wish granted. <laughs> All right. When you absolutely positively have to buy or sell your home and you got to do it quickly, um, then you need to turn to a really great realtor. And that's where real estate agents I trust.com comes in. This is a Glenn's company. He started it a while ago, a decade or so ago, because he was tired of dealing with incompetent real estate agents. So they went to work finding the best agents in your area. And they did this all across the country. Made sure that they're, they try to make sure that they're fans of the show too, so you have things in common with them. 
they've got great track records and marketing plans, and they're not just going to ask you to have an open house every single weekend so you can keep your house immaculate and leave it every single weekend while you try to... I mean, there might be an open house, just that won't be the only thing they rely on. Real Estate Agents I Trust. The name really says it all. Realestateagentsitrust.com. You're listening to Pat Gray Unleashed. Steve Baker coming up in just a few minutes. Live from prison. From Supermax. Wait, I don't know that... No, he's that... Is he not in a Supermax facility? Because that's where he belongs, as we all know. know that that's I, I felt a lot safer after the FBI uh, locked him up on Friday, because, whew, man. Guilty, 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 guilty! Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, they they set him loose. He's still out there. Yeah, he's roaming the streets right now, as far as his, I know. His uh, nightmarish terror down on the United States of America. We'll get into that coming up in a few minutes. You know, that fire is still going on in the Texas Panhandle. Jeez. Yeah, the Smokehouse Creek fire. Continued to rage this weekend. Look at this. God. These guys are heroes. Look yeah. at that. So you got a uh, guy driving, and then you got the guy out there with the, call this the pump and roll. And I'm told these are mostly volunteer firefighters, by the way. Wow. So, God Jeez. bless them. Yep. So, this is the panhandle. The Smoke Creek, uh, Smokehouse Creek fire is well over a million acres, only 15% contained as of right now. Wow. So... Even with that cold weather we had middle of last week? Yeah. Dang. That's amazing. Yeah. It's... it's it's. <laughs> so, Texas is a big state. Yes. So for all the precipitation we've been having here in DFW, the panhandle has not, mm. apparently. And it's wow. just been windy, too. And they still don't know what caused the, started these fires, right? We, mm. we still don't have uh, no, there a There was cause, a video right? circulating that oh, uh, okay. <laughs> may show a cause. Oh, okay. Uh, shows some green lasers this in North Texas during a storm. Watch this. Street. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fire, right. though. What, you, what the f*** is that? Okay, that... What is that, man? What is that? Okay. Show it again, because that went by very quickly. Uh, you got to pay attention. Uh-huh. And here it comes, and there it goes. Oh, you saw the laser. Sure did. Didn't look green. It looked white to me, but... What? There it is. Hold on. Did okay. it look green to you? Time out. Time out. Oh, there it is. We okay. Do a yeah, I see pole. the green here. Okay. All right. I was about to say, because yeah, one of us is colorblind, but okay. I see. <laughs> what is going on there? I don't know. Well, an article from 2023 from last year tries to explain what those green lasers could be. And what's the source of this? The federal government? Uh, Well, NASA. Okay, so then we believe this. Totally. Okay, whatever they say is the God's honest truth. First of all, they say to see the laser, you have to be in the exact right place at the right time, and you have to have the right conditions. ICE Satellite 2, which launched in September of 2018 uses lasers and a very precise detection instrument to measure oh. the elevation of ice sheets. Oh, wait, what? Sea ice. Hold on. Thickness. Okay. And land topography on oh. Earth. So oh. I, I guess that would be what you would apply to Texas. Then. Uh, okay, not They're the ice sheet. Land topography. Topography. I mean, so I hold guess. on. <clears throat> Has it been changing here in Texas? Is that the why topography? we need to update it? Mm, yes. Yes, it has. The laser instrument is technically a LIDAR sensor, which uh-huh. stands for light detection and ranging. Okay. LIDAR sensors are typically used to generate precise 3D measurements and are also used by autonomous vehicles to sense their surroundings. Mm. The LIDAR system aboard ICE SAT-2 fires, okay. fires 10,000 times a second, oh. sending six beams of light to Earth from orbit. Hmm. It precisely times how long it takes individual photons to bounce off the surface and return to the satellite. Of course. Sure. Could have told you that. Sure. You didn't need an article. Uh, Computer programs use these measurements to calculate ice losses from Greenland and Antarctica. That's why they're firing here in Texas. Right. Obviously. Uh, And observe how much of the polar oceans are frozen, determine the heights oh, of freshwater that's reservoirs, happening. That's what's happening. map shallow coastal yeah. regions, and more. And yeah. I guess, we do we fit into the yeah. and more? And more. <laughs> and more. 
and more. So, so if you are wondering, right. if you're if you're a there crazy you conspiracy theorist, yeah, you're if nutty. you're that QAnon you're type, like the white rural rage guys, they all are. Us, all right? those people buy into that QAnon stuff. And you stuff. saw the video going around. Yep. Just back off. We're trying to measure the polar ice caps in Texas and more. Yeah, right. In the end. No, no, no. You have a problem with that? You want to be a good citizen and stop asking questions. If you want to know how much of Greenland is melting, you fire lasers into North Texas. That's just what you do. Everybody knows that. Curvature of the earth thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too complicated for you to to understand. Leave it to the NASA experts. Stop asking questions. Just know what we're telling you is the truth and shut up. Thank you. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. All right, I'm glad we had that time Mm -hmm. together. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's uh, that's really that's strange. weird. Uh, that's really, really weird. And if you'll recall, this stuff was happening around Hawaii. Yes, and it was and China, what happened, right? Oh yeah, there were fires. Oh look at this, you and your hmm. QAnon nonsense. Yeah, right. What are you doing? I was merely making the point, <laughs> Pat. That they saw the same sort of phenomenon in Hawaii. Is yes. that where you were going? Yes. I'm okay. Just, I mean, I'm, All right. ironic thing. You didn't want to connect any dots. Because? that's terrible and conspiratorial. Yeah, next thing you're going to tell me there was crazy fires in Hawaii. Well, there were. Yeah, there were crazy oh, crap. fires. Really? Crazy that, fires in Hawaii. Have we but that's that? coincidence, Keith. Yes, yeah. lasers. Okay, so hold on. Preceded that, and lasers preceded the Texas thing, but... Hang on. Coincidence. That's all it is. But just like... North Texas, uh-huh. the Hawaii Islands are known for polar ice caps. <laughs> and so what you're doing is you're yeah. just kind of... Right. You're, measuring. You're, thank you. Measuring. The Greenland, Greenland ice sheet melted. Topography. Yeah. And that's more. What, that's what it is. And more. And more. And you're welcome, America, for that incredible explanation from NASA. Because <laughs> I, I, I don't want to hear any of the more of these conspiracy theories circulating. They explained it perfectly. Now we know. All right. Oh, we got a criminal coming in here now. <laughs> a criminal's Look on his this. way. I see you. All right. <laughs> we'll speak to a criminal next. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. And welcome to it. We are uh, joined by Felon mm. Steve Baker. Uh, <laughs> Blaze journalist. Uh, welcome. Misdemeanors. Misdemeanors, right. That's not a felony. Yeah. It's not a felony. I'm uh, a misdemeanor. Let me go <laughs> over some of the misdemeanors that you apparently committed, uh, allegedly, mm. n- including, but not limited to, knowingly entering or remaining in any restricted building or grounds without lawful authority. Now, uh, I was surprised to find out just in the last three years that the U.S. Capitol building is restricted space. You can't just walk into the Capitol building since when? Well, since COVID. All right. So they Uh, seriously. Yeah. So the the rules changed because that that was you know that was during the lockdown period. Okay. Yeah. So they had that restriction on at the time. Oh my gosh! So (laughs) it wasn't because Congress is in session. It's not because of any of that. It was just because of COVID. No, the the public is allowed oh, to wow. attend That's and what I watch. Thought. We Congress. pay for the dump. <laughs> <Right>. Yeah, <laughs> Jeez. thank you. Yeah, but it was it was COVID and and the uh, you know there, there's there's so much background on the security that they had for that day anyway. You know, as mm-hmm. far as the uh, what was denied National Guard, uh, I, I could spend an hour just talking about that, which. Obviously, I won't do, but mm-hmm. but there's so much controversy behind that. There's so much back and forth. There's so much uh, uh, discrepancies in all of that of who turned down the guard, who offered the guard, when did they do that, when did they do, that? and even up to the point where they were where they were trying to even some of the higher powers. I'm not talking about Pelosi and such as that, but some of the the, the good people were trying to even bring in the uh, unscalable fencing that they put up afterwards. You know, after the January 6 event, yeah. they were trying to get that in because there was enough intel that something bad was going to happen had they done that none of us would be sitting here right now today right jeez <laughs> amazing all right let me go through some of these other uh charges yeah i mean this you. is uh because uh, we have a rap even, sheet bro we haven't even scratched the surface yet of this guy um disorderly and disruptive conduct mm-hmm. in a restricted building or grounds except that that one didn't happen 
<laughs> that didn't happen. That didn't happen. So you're they do, pleading they, innocent to that charge. They hit. They hit everybody right. with this. See, Did all, they? yeah, all of the low level misdemeanor defenders are hit with these four charges. So if you were a 65 uh, year old grandma walking through and you did 10 minutes worth of selfies in there Mm -hmm. you never chanted you never raised your voice you didn't have a flag maybe you were wearing a trump hat or whatever but if that's all you did you still got these four basic charges and and the reason they do that is to scare you into pleading down to one of them so they can get you your two years probation your two thousand dollar fine hundred hours community service and they're notching their gun belt towards their next you know federally federal job promotion so what's a fine normally uh, it, it, they typically range from five hundred to two thousand dollars. Not a if you, cent. If you didn't do any but, damage, but not a cent. I, with all uh, the frightening sentences that people have received, I bet a lot of people are okay with caving sure. into that, right? <laughs> I yeah. bet a lot of people just say, "Yeah, okay, I'll pay the fine." Well, that's no, that's exactly what they do. And let me tell yeah. you, after you sit for five hours in leg chains in one of these, you know, cages, yeah, I, all I could do was sit there and think, go. Were you, uh, would they, I, they actually put leg chains oh, on yeah. you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they marched, then, marched me in front of the judge in leg chains. Yeah. I can't. That's and then, outrageous. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but oh they, they put your arms behind your back while other serious offenders got their uh, wrists in the front. Yeah, so I had so I was tied up in the back, and then when I got when the when the FBI delivered me to the federal courthouse and handed me off to the U.S. Marshals, there were other prisoners arriving, and I'm talking about the gangbangers, the meth dealers, all of that. They were all comfortably, you know, in the front, in the front, and I'm it's jacked outrageous. up in the back. Was well, that because you were disorderly conducting business in a Capitol building? Is that oh, what? Okay. It, that didn't happen either. That didn't no. happen. No. Okay. Well, like now, story, Steve. I understand this did happen. Parading, there it is. Demonstrating or picketing in a Capitol building. Did they left out milling. Fact, they left yeah, out milling. The milling. Did leave out the milling. Were you milling or parading? I, I, I was milling. You were milling. Uh-huh. I was milling. Okay. See, I did some milling while I was doing my uh-huh. journalism. <laughs> <laughs> I can't it, okay. believe this. So unreal. Even wow, liberal reporters were and, and put up actually put up this tweet that I sent in. Uh, uh, the Ryan Riley tweet, the full screen eight, the first one there. C- even this liberal reporter for NBC News. Is this is, the one that did no, the no, article no, not on that you? One. The really, no, the, the, the other one. one. Okay. The other one. Is, uh, this one right here. Was it Ryan Riley that did the article on you this weekend? Yes, he did. He's one okay. of them. Okay. Okay. So if it wasn't for Steve Baker's language on January 6th, before uh-huh. he entered the Capitol, and that evening, this case almost certainly wouldn't have been brought. Well, pay, pay attention to a couple of words there. Before yeah. I went to the Capitol, and then later that evening after I left the Capitol. Uh huh. So, and the language you're talking about is one of the things is that uh, you committed an incredible crime by calling Nancy Pelosi the B word. I, I did. I, I did. Is that, are you admitting to that? Oh, I got news uh, for you. If that's a crime, <laughs> <laughs> we're all going to be at Leavenworth for worse things. Am I confessing to telling the truth? Uh, yes, <laughs> I am. But this is a free speech thing. <laughs> oh, man. The, but, but you, did but, they but, ask you about it this weekend? Did the FBI ask you why you called her that? No, but they did in my interview two years ago. So, oh, okay. So they actually, so they, you know, so that, because it's on video mm-hmm. and, and um, it was my, myself. Yeah, you're not hiding it. No, myself and another writer at, you know, after we got back to our hotel late at night, we were doing a postmortem, had a couple of adult beverages, we're sitting <laughs> around, we, we turned the camera mm-hmm. on and we're talking about it. And I said that I went into the hallway, into Pelosi, the speaker's hallway. And as soon as I saw that people were in there actually turning over chairs, tables, uh, rifling through stuff and doing damage in her in her office, I got the heck out of Dodge. I, I mean, I mean, I turned around and, and headed back the other way, which you can see on my own camera. Mm-hmm. And so and so he said something about they were they were destroying her office. I said, yeah, I said, and I said something to the effect of, you know, and it and it couldn't have happened to a more deserving B word. Mm-hmm. And and uh, and so the FBI brought that up to me and i and i said to them i said they said why did you do that i said because i wasn't in mcconnell's office (laughs) and and i said if i'd have been in mcconnell's office i would have said it couldn't have happened to a more deserving bastard (laughs) and 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 then i said and i said to them immediately i said in what part of me being a libertarian do you not yet understand that i don't like either of them that's great yeah that's awesome yeah (laughs) but apparently to the fbi it's a crime I mean, do they not understand we have a First Amendment here? 
where well, you can criticize well, uh, not. our elected officials apparently and call not. them names. Put up the other Ryan Riley. Uh, as long as it's there. not a threat, you can do it. Well, the it's uh, well, no, you can do it as a threat. I could have said even worse. Actually, actually, Stuart Rhodes, founder of the Oath Keepers, a yeah. week after he got home from from uh, the January sixth event, he was had. But he had been drinking. He was in a parking lot. He was being surreptitiously, surreptitiously recorded by an FBI confidential human source in this conversation, mm-hmm. in which he said he wished he had brought his rifle with him and put a bullet in Nancy Pelosi's head. Ooh. Now he said that. That does not go over well with a DC jury. No. But what he said was not illegal. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, I wished I had done it. Didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a bad thing to say. Right. Right. So, yeah. Okay. As, as long as they're going to make politics an Jeez. issue, which clearly they are. Um, <clears throat> and people can do their own homework on this. I was doing a little research uh, on my own here, and I noticed that the agent that brought these um, charges against you um, definitely leans left and definitely has a very, very <clears throat> close uh, relative who is effectively an activist on social media for the left. So I would just like to point that out. Um, but I'm sure politics has nothing to do with this. This is strictly a, a, a criminal case, and, and, and those those don't play in whatsoever. The, the agent who was investigating me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah, Mr. Mm-hmm. Noyes. Interesting. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. Mm. Interesting. So there you go. There's a little fun <laughs> fact for you. How about <laughs> that? Yeah. There you go. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty clear that they're trying to make an example of you. For yeah, continuing well, for to report sure. on this thing. Is that how you feel? I, I've felt that way for a month. I, I can't say that I initially felt that way because I didn't really find the good stuff until after they first interviewed me. And it was after that that I began to kind of you know pull on those strings that unravel the garment. So, mm-hmm. uh, Which, of course, we're doing and going to continue to do, no matter what good they you. threaten me with right now. You've got Jeez. so much support. And, and, and I just want to thank all of the hierarchy at this company for standing behind you too because this is oh, yeah. very important yeah, not just is. for you not just for this company but journalism as a whole it's blown blown my mind and uh, you know as, as they say when if anybody could have their socks <clears throat> blessed off <laughs> you guys have blessed my socks off and the thing is why aren't other journalists equally supportive of you because this could easily be them i guess they don't have any fear that this could eventually turn and be directed against them but it sure could at any point in time you know the point i want to make to any of them that are listening right now is 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 it doesn't you don't have to fear if trump re you know rewins the presidency and he uh exacts his retribution on his Mm -hmm. uh, on his enemies that's not what they have to fear they have to fear the regime and the spirit of this regime itself because even the bolsheviks had factions and the first thing they Mm -hmm. did is murdered and jailed their other factions and you may you may think you you may think you're in the right club Mm -hmm. but when they get a hundred percent power they clear out the people closest to him first. And a really good indication of that is the way the left is treating Biden right now because of his su- supposed support for Israel. I mean, they're really anti-Biden because he has offered some support to Israel, and they can't abide that. Right. They they want it all to go to the Palestinians. You don't know when it's going to turn on you. Right. And when it does, it turns on you hard. Yeah. So what's next uh, on the calendar here for your... Uh process uh the the next thing that we have is basically a duplicative hearing in dc on the 14th of this month so uh we can actually do that by zoom so I'm not, i don't have to travel to dc for that mm. particular hearing uh but it, it's basically a repeat of this but this time it will be in who in front of whoever my assigned judge is going to be so we're going to learn who my judge is that's a very key point oh that's, a dc judge yeah the dc oh, I'm judge. sure it'll be a, a libertarian <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 if we get get one of the hanging judges it will certainly affect the way we you know plan and you strategize going forward mm. i would think if if it is a hanging judge if it's some liberal douchebag you'll probably look i will you take the offer i've i've been on the record that i'm not going to plea yeah good, good, i mean it, they're they're look as i said earlier five hours in leg chains in a, in a cage i was about to lose my mind i can't imagine I and, I, and i was sitting there thinking to myself and actually saying this to myself steve you don't have a right 
to even come close to the anger and emotion that the guys who are doing this for five years are feeling right now. Right. And mm. and 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 it's but nevertheless, I was already I was already looking for the cracks and where mm-hmm. where you know where can I get out? Mm-hmm. And by and by and, and in that last hour, I'm just pacing. You, you called it humiliating. I'm pacing. I'm pa- it was humi- it was yeah. utter humiliation. And that's what that that's what that it's designed act to be was. That. And it didn't yeah. have to be that. Right. All all they had to do. Well, for, and I asked I asked the guys that were you know the the FBI guys as they were patting me down and mm-hmm. doing that whole thing. I asked them. I said, so how often do you do this with um, misdemeanor defendants? And they they kind of mumbled something. And so I, I reworded it and, and I said I said uh, yeah j- no seriously um, do you do you guys get do you guys actually do many misdemeanor cases actually? Hmm. And dead silence, because if they had answered, they would have had to say no. Right. Because in the history of the FBI, the history, 100 years plus, they never did F, uh, misdemeanor cases until January 6th. Wow. My gosh. So why is this oh, not man been in front of a jury yet? Like, in the normal process of these cases, isn't the evidence presented to a jury, or do I have that wrong? It was a grand, a grand jury. A grand jury looked at this. Right. Uh, and, and so back in August, when I got a grand jury subpoena for my videos, that scared the crap out of me. Mm-hmm. Because that, because mm-hmm. grand juries are not seated for misdemeanors either. They are only seated for felony offenses. And I thought, what in the world are they going to try and pull out here? And... Um, and apparently, I, we don't know because grand juries are secret. Uh, so okay. they're, they're, there's no transcripts made and available to the public on grand oh, jury deliberation. American. So um, so apparently, whatever felony that the government put in front of them, the grand jury went, mm, not so much. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, I got you now. All right. I learned some interesting things about you over the weekend, some very disturbing uh, things Dist- that I, I didn't know prior <laughs> to the articles that came out about you. And one is that you were a singer in a David Bowie tribute band. That was probably the most that, damning yeah, thing that came but, out. Well, I think it's the second most damning thing. The most damning thing I heard about you this weekend is that your favorite, your oh. all-time favorite band oh, no. is Toto. Is that true? Is that true? Cause, Guilty as oh. charged. <laughs> That's wow. what you learn when you go drinking with Steve Baker. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I like Toto. But I don't know if I've ever heard the words, <laughs> you know who my favorite band of all time is? Yeah. Toto. Yeah. So like a cover of the Rains <laughs> Down in Africa started playing at the bar we were at I, yesterday. And I was like, hey, this is Weezer. We're at Yankovic. And I thought, this is a fun fact. No, no way Steve knows this. He's like, yeah, I know. Yeah, this is and Toto's my favorite band of all time. <laughs> I have I have done the, the the Toto road trips like the people do with Grateful Dead and followed what? them around. Have you really? Oh yeah, sure. I love it. Yeah. Do you still? Uh, well, they're actually on tour right now. Are they? Yeah, they're out with uh, the with is Journey. Parkero still they're out, in the band. Uh, uh, the the Luke Ather, Luke Ather, the, Luke Ather, the, the guitarist awesome. is yeah. still the the original guy that's with them. Uh, but is he the know, only one? Yeah, but to, oh. you know Toto Toto is a, a is more. It's less about who's on stage as it mm-hmm. is an experience. So, because they always have yeah. the greatest session players in the world on the road with them, whoever it is. So they well, that was a talented band. Yeah, I will say that. Yeah, I mean they were they were real talents. Yeah, uh, they're in fact the Eagles. I think said something about uh, Don Henley said something like there's the most talented band in the world is Toto. Well, even, even uh, wow. Henley mm-hmm. and Timothy B. Schmidt have sang background vocals on their right. rec- yeah. on Toto records. And so, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing we learned is that you're a big Dune fan. Uh, you, have you seen Dune 2? I did last night. Oh, uh, yeah. and did you love it? I Okay, all right, all right. So I'm actually the ultimate Dune ner- nerd. I collect Frank Herbert, the author Frank Herbert. I collect his books. <laughs> I, I collect his books in all languages and, and covers and you know everything. I've read Dune the first uh, novel six or seven times uh wow uh, and, and it's in addition to seeing all the movie and sci-fi uh miniseries versions of the thing hundreds of times does that mean you that. like the original from 84 84 has um it has its strong points obviously it has some problems the, mm-hmm. the biggest problem with the the 1984 david lynch version is is that out of the six hours roughly that lynch shot of footage the studios cut it down to two hours and 15 minutes and it was oh. absolutely incomprehensible it sure was and and, and yeah, it's it was. and it's a book that's so dense that 
nobody in Hollywood believed it could ever effectively p- be put on the big screen anyway. So what he should have done is divided in in two, like this guy. Yeah, did. yeah. Denis like Villeneuve the did that. He he was not going to tell this story in one movie. He put he kind of threw that gauntlet down early on, um, and fortunately they they made enough move, uh, money from the first. Uh, the first one to be green lighted for the second one. The second one is gigantic. It's big. It's mind blowing. The, the 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 visuals are just unlike anything you've ever seen before. Mm. But for a Dune aficionado, in fact, I was talking to my daughter about it this morning. I think that if you have never read the book, I think the movie is going to be ultimately satisfying to okay. you. And but okay, because I have not. Right. So yeah. That's I, I think it's going to be ultimately I, because he buttons it up. All and right. I asked my daughter, I said, did it did it feel like there was closure? Did you feel like you got the payoff at the end for such a big movie? And she said, oh, yeah, absolutely. And then hmm. but for me, somebody who knows the complexity of the story it and it wasn't read, and had read satisfying. all six of the original books, it's it, I, I left in total admiration of the cinematography the 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 the, the visuals the movie the, the acting everything was great but in terms of the script i felt kind of empty really yeah mm. because oh, it, because wow. okay because it, there's it, it's still the, the book is just too dense yeah to do in yeah. five hours worth of you know that's why people movies. should never read books. It ruins <laughs> movies. It ruins too many movies. We have a solution. Steve, so books ruin stop, movies. Stop reading. stop reading the book. <laughs> I haven't read the book, so I'm sure I'm probably going to like it. My son saw it over the weekend. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. So cool. I'm going to go tonight uh, and see what we think. But it made $81.5 million over the weekend. Did all right. Yeah, oh, wow. did really well. So, Okay. I, sorry. I just had a quick question, though. Is there a <clears> chance that this whole insanity with you on march 14th could it possibly be over or is that just one step i i I, no it's it's just it's more as i said it's more of the same of what we did on friday uh except that any you know things can change and they can change on a dime which is why my attorneys are like going you know telling me to shut up right now about almost everything because you Mm -hmm. know i i I bet they are i have i have uh as i you know say the loose lips sinking mm. ships kind of mm-hmm. thing but mm-hmm. um and i was ready i mean by yesterday i was ready to go i I'd emotionally kind of recovered enough that i was ready to go back into into battle and they're like uh, there's time for that later there's time for, <laughs> yeah, hold back hold back hold back and so i'm having to like on my more hard-hitting tweets i'm having to send that over to my attorneys group we have a message you know group going and i send them over to them and they're like no nope, not that not that one <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me ask you this, because another quote I saw from you, um, it kind of s- surprised me a little bit, but you you apparently offered 100% support for what happened on January 6th. So I did about a total of a half hour worth of recorded interview with WUSA at, after I came out of the Capitol building. Yeah. I did uh, 15 minutes with their you know uh, crew on the grounds. And then later that evening, I got a call from their actual WUSA evening news anchor, mm-hmm. and he wanted to interview me. They cut that roughly half hour worth of interview mm-hmm. down to less than 15 seconds. Snip, snip, oh, okay. snip. Yeah, that's what and, I figured. And, I mean, you couldn't – it could not have been more out of context. And then and mm-hmm. very derisively mm-hmm. referred to me as a um, self-declared citizen journalist. Oh, okay. Said oh, okay. pathetic. Yeah, pathetic. I, it's I was, the normal spin. Yeah, no, I was left. getting, and they did it so fast. And in fact, that night, by by eleven twelve that night, I was getting messages from my blog followers going, "Steve, got you got to go look at what US, WSA did to you. They they totally did a hatchet job on you. They recognized it." It wasn't even. It wasn't even. You know, like like subtle. They said you got to see this. You got to see this mm. clip, clip, clip in fifteen seconds, and it's like you can see it hack. And and again, we addressed that in my FBI interview. I when they brought when they brought that up to me, I said exactly the same thing to them. I'm looking across the table, and I said, "Did you see the edit, edit, edit on that?" And the the FBI agent, Mr. Noyes, went. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, but he didn't want to grant you that point at no. all. Instead, obviously. instead he. But see, that's but they do Pathetic. that. On, they do that on all of these charging documents. They all make you look ten times worse than mm-hmm. you were mm-hmm. because they are establishing a narrative for yep. the, your prosecution. And I will say, 
even if you did support it 100% and still do. It doesn't that matter. It doesn't sure, right. matter in in charging you with a criminal right. offense because it's not That's the a thing. criminal offense. That's the thing. Right? I mean, I think it was a big mistake that we got violent. That Not we, oh, I absolutely. wasn't there. But people got violent on that yeah. day, and they've used it against us ever since. And it's all they've got against the right, really. Well, January 6th, insurrection, insurrection. And so they were provided that narrative i mean that's how that yeah. talking and point that's how antifa operates yes. uh, violence yes uh, okay so this weekend i had to and we <clears throat> have very little time here but i had to talk to my kids about and i'm having to do this more and more and more frequently and you were the centerpiece of this weekend's discussion it's like, like I, I don't i don't know what to say to my kids about this country anymore and mm. i just wonder from your unique perspective how you feeling about this country man because this this sucks <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm less optimistic than I've ever been. Yeah. How's that mm-hmm. for an answer? I mean, I, I don't I don't even mm-hmm. I, I can't I can't manufacture optimism right now. I, I, right. I try. I still I still you know you try to be hopeful, and then when you get past hopeful, you just mm-hmm. you know uh, prepare and pray for the best. That's yep. all I can do. Yep. Well, God bless you, man. Yeah. Thanks for all you've done, all you're doing to expose what happened on January 6th and get the true story out there. Yeah, and that's why you're the target. Good luck. We'll be praying for you in your upcoming uh, adventure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Steve Baker, uh, we've got overtime coming up. We'll be back here on Pack Ray Unleashed tomorrow. See you then. This is Pat Gray Unleashed.